15 months history of intermittent painless hematuria after active exercise but without dysuria or increased frequency of micturation. He also had frequent cold and sore throat. On examination, he was fit, healthy, blood pressure is normal. Investigations show urine analysis has got hematuria, blood, trace of protein, micturating cystogram and cystoscopy were normal. Hemoglobin, WBC, blood urea, creatinine, clearance, complement and uh, hemolytic complement levels were all normal. So now the important thing is, so this is also an example for the questions that you have in your exams. Pay, you know, particular attention, for example, the age, that is very important. Then sometimes when they say that all these are normal, that is the best way of ruling out lot of diseases. Now I'll tell you which, which diseases they have ruled out with the history here and then also with the investigation. So for example, but without dysuria, increased frequency of micturation. Which conditions have got dysuria? Stones, infections, bladder infection, urethritis and also increased frequency. Which conditions have got increased frequency? Diabetes. Diabetes. So you, they are ruling out these conditions. Then uh, painless hematuria, so there is lot of blood which is associated with exercise and other features are fine on examination. Hemoglobin, WBC count, blood urea, creatinine clearance, they are all normal. What does that mean? No infection. Complement levels are okay. No immune complex mediated disease. No IgG, no IgM. They are not involved. So then when they all are not involved, what is causing this? IgA, IgA nephropathy. IgA is able to activate complement system? No. Where is it normally produced? Mucosa. Gastrointestinal tract, renal, uh, respiratory. And what is its job? Its main job is to just bind and neutralize. It never activates the complement system. Another thing is these patients are associated with infections. Why? Because GI infection, respiratory infection, they will trigger the overproduction of IgA antibody. Okay? But is this the main problem in this patient? Why there is too much IgA? Why is it causing any trouble? You know, I told you that IgA is dimeric in structure. It has got a secretory chain. At this portion, they have got a... Spe so, IgA is produced and then the body has a system of degrading the IgA antibodies. When it is not required, it will be destroyed and taken up by the macrophages. But sometimes there is a genetic defect. And where is this genetic defect? at the hind region where these three join together and there is problem with glycosylation. There is a genetic defect of glycosylation at the hind region. So when this is defective, the eating process or degrading process of IgA antibody is not proper. So IgA antibody just keep accumulating in the body. lot of IgA is accumulated. When lot of IgA is accumulated, this IgA itself go and get trapped in the glomerulus. <clears throat> in the first it will be in the blood, then when the blood goes in the, you know, the glomerular capillaries, it will be deposited there as an antigen. So IgA antibody itself is acting as an antigen. Okay, and once it is deposited, then it can trigger damage to the glomerulus. So what should be next done and what do you ex expect? IgA nephropathy, another important thing is it's the most common uh, glomerular nephritis cause. One of the most common cause of glomerular nephritis. It is most commonly seen in male patients and in the second and third decade of life. Secretory IgA concentration is increased in 50% of the patients. 
it may ra rapidly progress to renal failure. That is why actually one of uh, the, you know, your senior students, he had IgA nephropathy and he had to go through, you know, uh, dialysis and all this process. So, it is one of the commonest causes of glomerular nephritis. It just is called as painless hematuria. You know, patient will be fit, fine, nothing, just blood in the urine and it will not be even painful. So, it is called as painless hematuria or Berger's disease is the, you know, the, the other names for this disease. And again, you can see there that there is a crescentic or granular staining around and same as in the electron microscopy. Now, coming on to the last case is the anti-GBM, anti-glomerular basement membrane disease. <coughs> so, as the name itself tells you that it is the autoantibodies are produced against the basement membrane. What particularly in the basement membrane? Basement membrane is made up of collagen fibers, especially type 4. Okay? So, certain specific conditions, so where this glomerular basement membrane can be in the kidney, in the glomerulus or in the lungs at the level of the alveoli. Both these levels of the, you know, <coughs> basement membrane can be targeted. Then the triggering factor are something in the environment. So, what are those factors? For example, smoking. Smoking can expose the collagen type 4 fibers to the autoantibodies or sometimes certain drugs or medications. So, once it is exposed, the autoantibodies cause damage. That is why the patient will have features of the lungs and features of the kidney, both together. So, that is why you can see here first, uh, it causes lung hemorrhage and glomerular nephritis. It is also called as good posture syndrome. That is based on the doctor who, you know, explained the syndrome and mainly in the young man at or in the late 20s or in both the genders of 60 to 70 years of age, hemoptysis. What is that? Cuffing up blood, sudden fall in hemoglobin, fever, dyspnea and hematuria. So, a combination of these features where you have kidney and lung involvement. Urgent kidney biopsy is needed to confirm the diagnosis, renal biopsy show focal or segmental necrosis. So, both are pos possible and linear immunofluorescent staining of IgG will be seen very rare to find IgA staining. Now, one last thing is about the prognosis. It has got these crescentic shapes. 50 percent, more than 50 percent of the crescents means that the kidney is very rapidly going towards damage or fibrosis. Serum creatinine level more than 5 to 6 milligram is also a bad prognostic sign. Oligoyuria, again nothing, you know, positive and acute dialysis is needed. Now, if you have any questions, you are welcome. <coughs>